the most basic thing, just, just, just all of this, the Word of God, the Word. You don't know Jesus if you haven't read the Bible. Because the Bible is the Word. And you know who else is the Word? Jesus is the Word. Amen. Jesus is the Word made flesh. Jesus embodies the Bible, the Word of God. He is the Word incarnate. If you don't know this, you don't know Jesus. Now, hopefully you know enough about Jesus to get saved, and he knows you. That's the most important thing, but, that, but again, that's the beginning. That's the start. Don't go walking around saying how well you know God if you're not keeping his commandments. And how can you keep his commandments if you don't even know what they are? Let's keep reading here. Verse number five. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. And again, he's calling out people that say things, right? Oh, you say you know God? Hey, if you, if you say you know God and you're not keeping his commandments, you don't really know him. And then he says, you say you abide in him? You say you live with him? You say you're in God? Well, then you ought to walk that way. You ought to do that way. Keep your place again in 1 John 2. Turn back to John chapter 15. A lot of what we're reading here is very similar to what Jesus taught in John chapter 15, which is also a passage that is commonly taken out of context or just misapplied and, and mistaught to be talking about salvation when it's not. John chapter 15, we're going to start reading in verse number 1. The Bible reads, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, the, just like what we're reading in First John, uh, just in general, about, about sinning and fellowship and everything, this is about bearing fruit. So he says, every branch in me... That is in Christ, but doesn't bear fruit. He says he's going to take that away. It doesn't mean that that person isn't saved. They are in Christ, but they're not doing anything. They're not bearing fruit. And he's like, look, you're here for a purpose. And this is what God has put us on this, on this planet for a purpose. Just like Ephesians chapter 2 Hey, verses 8 and 9 talk clearly about salvation being a free gift. It's grace. It has nothing to do with us. But then verse 10 says, hey, but where is workmanship created unto good works? Like, this is why you're here. Now you need to do good. You need to serve. You need to be a minister of the gospel. You need to live your life right. And you need to bring forth fruit. You need to bring other people. You need to evangelize. You need to bring forth more Christians, more believers. Disciple people, get them baptized, get them saved. Obviously not in that order. <laughs> we need to be doing those things and bringing forth fruit because if God's got a job for you to do as his son, as his servant, hey, look, I've got work for you to do. And then you're just not doing it, not doing it, not doing it. He's saying like, you know what? I'm just going to cast that to the side. I'm going to cast you to the side. You're not, you're not doing what I need you to do. You're not, you're not doing, it's, you're good for nothing. 